What is up everybody? It's your girl Stephanie and thanks for joining me again and if you're new here, hi welcome. My name is Steph and on this channel we talk about everything fragrance except for the month of October. <laughs> I kind of got an idea to incorporate fragrance somehow with something else that really intrigues me and that is true crime. Your guys' support is very much appreciated. If you're new here, I talk about fragrance most of the time but for the month of October, like I said, I wanted to incorporate some murder mystery, true crime type of things. So I want to try to upload at least twice a week. We're going to see how this goes. The way that I'm planning on kind of doing this is kind of starting with picking my perfumes for the week. Just so that it's kind of just fragrance related at the beginning of the video. And then we'll get into the actual true crime or case on this on the latter half of the videos so i have all like my fall fragrances here i do want to pick three kind of like uh testers so i'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about them and then um i'm going to pick three kind of main ones that i will probably most likely be gravitating to i have a couple of testers in mind I kind of want to revisit by Radio's Bibliothek. I have sprayed this on a card and I've sprayed it like a couple of times on my wrist. But I actually want to give like the last few sprays that are in here a full wear. Um, as of right now, it's not something that I'm totally in love with. Bibliothek is a really pretty, uh, slightly fruity fragrance it has like leathery touches in it very academia if like academia is your vibe i will go ahead and put pictures up of like what the academia aesthetic is but if that's your vibe i feel like you would totally love this this smells like a leather bound book and the girl that's wearing it is wearing red lipstick and some sort of fruity fragrance with it so you get these leathery touches like i said but you also get some fruitiness from this fragrance. I hope that this makes any sense at all. And I'll go ahead and leave the notes up. But I know this for sure has to have iris. It has to have some sort of fruity notes. And like it has to have some sort of leather or suede accord. Um, another one that I want to try wearing all over is from Theo Cavanel and this is Cafe Cavanel. So this one right here, you guys, I've tested it out already. I don't know that I love this. Um, I, I'm, I do want to wear it fully everywhere. I like it, but there's, there's something in here that I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. This is a very realistic gourmand. If you're into very literal realistic gourmands, definitely, um, worth checking out. I think it's really unique and pretty, but uh, as of right now, I don't know. It's like up in the air. And then the third one, oh, I'm just like, I just want to wear this one all the time. Like, I literally just want to wear this one this week. Bond number nine, Greenwich Village. This is so nice, you guys. This is so bougie smelling. Okay, if you love Baccarat Rouge, this smells, literally, when I first sprayed it, I was like, this smells like something I know. This smells like something that I've smelled before. And I was like, am I crazy? Does this smell like Baccarat? Because I didn't hear anybody talking about how this smells like Baccarat Rouge by 40. And literally, you guys, <laughs> um, somebody on Fragranica said this perfectly. This smells like if you got Baccarat Rouge by 40 and mixed it with Delina from Parfums de Marly, and you get this you get Greenwich Village. Oh my goodness. This, this does, however, though, if you didn't like the like latex glove type of uh, medical supplies type of note that's in Baccarat, it's definitely prominent in this, <laughs> at least for like the first 10 minutes. And then after that, it just becomes sweeter. And you do get a Nosmic to this. And I think it's because of the Ambroxan that's in this. The Ambroxan in here really gives this fragrance a lift. So the beauty in this fragrance is when you get wafts of it in the air. This one is a lot more floral and fruity 
definitely if you have not gotten your nose on Greenwich Village I would recommend I literally this is what I want to wear even though we're in fall time you guys but this is what I want to wear today it's like just very 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 hot I think I'm gonna go with one of them for sure is gonna be coffee break I finally got a full bottle of this you guys I love this fragrance I've already given it a full wear test and this will last like a good four hours five lingering very very close to the skin you have to really put your nose to it but five solid hours is good enough for like the morning for the daytime so and it's so cozy and comforting literally like it says creamy and cozy coffee yes with added lavender love this one this one is definitely going on my tray okay I am gonna go with um, Musk 004 uh, from Zara just because this is a good cheapie I feel and this one you just can't go wrong with it it's really nice honestly and fresh but there's this like sweetness to it, it has iris um, an, like an almond joy note not almond joy a Jordan almond note and this is like a good like just everyday put on like I literally made such a big dent you guys I've only had it for maybe about a month and like almost halfway done with it and the last one that I'm going to choose just in case I go out in the evening I doubt that that'll happen but you never know you know just in case um I am going to go for alien because I think it still has like a freshness it has a coldness to it um and I think that this would just be perfect for nighttime I just really love this fragrance I love how kind of soapy it is, how like a little slightly but indolic it is and mysterious and I feel like it's perfect for this video as well. Just to give you guys a summary, um, I'm doing Greenwich Village from Bond Number 9, uh, Bibliotech from Byredo, uh, Teo Cabanel, Cafe Cabanel, and then um, I'm going to do Alien, Coffee Break, and Musk 004. So that's gonna be the tray for the week, you guys. So that is it for the fragrance portion of this video. Now, I did still wanna incorporate fragrance with this story. So I am at the end of the video going to kind of scent this story or scent the people that this story is about. We've changed the part up <laughs> just because uh, that way there's no interruption on this mic, but anyways. Let's go ahead and jump into the story because this story blew my mind. It blew my socks off completely and it was a little bit creepy. <laughs> so get ready, you guys. All right. So this is the story of June and Jennifer Gibbons, also known as the silent twins. To me, this the twin phenomenon honestly is it sounds like beautiful but it also does sound like a little bit of a curse because you have someone who looks identical to you if you are an identical twin right some twins do possess like a really tight bond a really close connection like i've even heard of fraternal twins who are just really really close to their sibling like they you know it's like the only person that they would ever trust in their whole entire life but in june and jennifer's case that actually wasn't it We'll dive right into that in a little bit. The girls were born in 1963 to Barbadian parents and grew up in a small town in Wales called Hayford West. Hayford West. So June was born first and then Jennifer was the next one that was born. But it was said that even though Jennifer was the youngest, technically like they're both the same age but you know you know siblings so jennifer was always kind of known as the stronger twin or the one that almost seemed like she possessed more power over june even though june was the oldest one since birth they have been inseparable now when they got a little bit older when they started going to school they kind of had like speech impediment problems. They really didn't communicate all that well. They did get picked on a lot at school because of that aspect in their life, um, as well as like 
just nobody in general being able to really understand what they were trying to say or what they were trying to communicate. I see you push button that was pretty worried about this. And they're always shy. And they're not, you know, not speaking. Well, this part, what we can understand what we're saying. Yeah. Slowly but surely, the two twins kind of started secluding themselves. They just became frustrated that people didn't un understand them or want to take the time to understand them. So they kind of just isolated themselves, you know, a simple way of putting it. They kind of isolated themselves. And on top of that, they went to a school where it was primarily white kids. And actually, it was all white kids. They were the only colored kids. So you can only imagine the stuff that these girls went through, the type of bullying that they went through um, in this school. They experienced a lot of racism and things like that. So, um, yeah, I can I can see why they would isolate themselves or not want to talk to anyone because, like, who can you trust, you know, if you're being that severely bullied? It was said that the bullying was so bad that the girls actually had to leave, like, an hour before class was over just so that that way they wouldn't have to endure the severe bullying that they were going through. These poor girls, my goodness. As they got older, they still honestly were not talking to a lot of people. The only person that they would talk to in their own, even in their own family, you guys, this is how isolated the girls were, uh, was their younger sister, Rosie, and that's because she shared a room with the girls. That was the only other person in the household that the girls would even want to communicate with. So as they kept progressing in school, teachers were getting really frustrated and they started to see a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist recommended that the parents move them to kind of a different like type of school, more special education, so that way they can really hone in on getting the girls to communicate more properly or at least even get them to speak. And it almost seemed like they had developed their own special language that only one or the other can like could understand once they started going to their psychiatric evaluations and stuff they realized that it was like a version of sped up english and barbados slang the girls started getting a little bit older but they really weren't getting the results even in this school that the parents wanted honestly their communication got better but they still were very codependent of each other it was weird it was like they were almost one person that's kind of like the best way to describe what people saw in these two girls. So they thought, okay, maybe they just need to be like an individual, like not be so codependent on each other because they literally would do everything in sync, whether that was walking, whether that was eating, like everything they did, they did it together. So they decided, okay, we're gonna separate them, right? So they decided to put them in two separate schools, in two separate boarding schools. And they did not do well, you guys. Um, if one of the twins was eating, it was reported that the other one wouldn't. Um, it was just really bizarre because they weren't at the same place, the same days, but one would eat, one wouldn't. It was like as if they had flipped a switch on June and Jennifer and they just were not doing well so they decided to put them together and once again they kind of were thriving a little bit better they were doing a lot better when they were together um but as they got older they kind of were getting sick of each other they would always constantly be fighting and by the time they were teens honestly it almost seemed like they hated each other Jennifer and June just experienced kind of like a lot of frustrations. They started kind of writing in their diaries about things that they wanted to do, really dark things that they wanted to do. And so when they started experimenting with drugs and alcohol at like the age of 15, 16, um, the girls kind of got a little more ballsy and they started, you know, doing petty theft. Um, they even burned down a building you guys they they burned down like a building they had a lot going on and crime I'm a labeled thief but haven't I always been one all this week I've been wanting to burn down the tractor store in snowdrop lane I burned it down today with the help of Jennifer of course the greatest moment of my life we opened all the cans of petrol and spread it everywhere 
Can you believe that I'm the arsonist of Haverford West? Yes, I am. I'm going to burn down the whole damn town. Oh, yes, I am. You can bet your heart about that. So they ha they got incarcerated. But in jail, like, they tried separating the two girls. But like I said, they they would never do well separated. So they were always kind of just placed together all over again. They moved them into a psychiatric ward that was very high security. It was like, it was really, um, it was kind of extreme. And so the girls you know they really weren't doing well at that location you know even though they were together they still kept fighting each other um and then i believe it was jennifer who was writing things about how she hated her sister june how she wished like and get rid of her like they really had like this hate hate towards each other but jennifer wrote this about her sister this is so crazy we have become fatal enemies in each other's eyes I say to myself, can I get rid of my own shadow? Impossible or not possible? Without my shadow, would I die? Without my shadow, would I gain life? Be free or left to die? Question mark. One entry from June said she wants us to be equal. There is a murderous gleam in her eye. Dear Lord, I am scared of her. This is the other twin, okay? She is not normal. Someone is driving her insane. It is me. So after almost 12 years in that psychiatric ward, they moved them to one that was slightly less intimidating, less, you know, high security. And um, it was said that when they were moving them, they had already kind of discussed, they, they had always discussed the fact that none of them would be happy unless the other one was gone. They had it like set in their mind. And so when they left the facility, they were like, we have chosen, which I find really bizarre. Like the other one knew the other one's thoughts. I don't know. If it... That's pretty cool though. <laughs> like, I mean, it's creepy, but it's also pretty cool. And that was the last time that June was alive. When there was no poison in her system, um, you know, she didn't get murdered, nothing of that sort. It's as if she willed herself gone and it happened. Or as if the other twin willed her gone and that's how it happened. When June died, okay, Jennifer became completely normal. Like, she was talkative she was outgoing she wasn't being like who she used to be you know what i mean like it's as if she became a whole person again i should feel love that of freedom it's unbelievable that i'm actually going out in the big wide world doing normal things that normal people do i've been locked up for so long it's good it feels good i feel that i'm living for her that this is what she would have wanted for me to go on living for her. And every day I wake up and say to myself, well, there was one more day for me, but one, one more day for my sister as well. And on her sister's grave is inscribed this poem, a poem that actually June wrote herself. Take a look at this, you guys. We once were two. We two made one. We know more too. Through life, be one rest in peace so it was said that june wrote this before they even left the facility it's weird it's really bizarre you guys what do you guys think of this story i find it very fascinating i find it a little bit eerie and creepy like how does someone's heart just stop beating you know after they have like said okay we've chosen you know like a little bizarre what do you guys think of this story have you guys heard of this story if not let me know your thoughts down below on this story so because this story is so weird i am going to send this story and i'm going to choose alien because alien to me has this very mysterious vibe and to me alien just reminds me of this story because it, it's just a very mysterious story to me 
tell me your thoughts down below i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up also don't forget to subscribe down below and activate that bell so you're notified every single time that i post but thank you guys for watching and until next time talk to you guys later